Rin from Hallowed Be Thy Game, and today I'm going to share my cuckoo bananas feelings for 13 Sentinels. Let's check it out. Thanks everyone for joining me for today's episode. I'm going to be honest, we got a lot to discuss here. Actually, not that much. 13 Sentinels is a dangerous video game because games like this don't come around every once in a while. They don't come around every month, every six months. The thing is, is that the unique storytelling, the addictive RTS ATB system mashup, this game is legit. And it scares me because I'm about 30% of the way through this game, and I'm just basing that off of the percentage numbers I see on the home screen. Once I beat this game, what do I do? Like, do I just go play another video game? This is the Vidya game that you just hunt when you're on the quest for hallowed video games. I was addicted to MMORPGs for way too long, and I'm on this glorious quest to just find games like this. And this game has been out, and people like Devil May Pi have been constantly saying, hey, you need to play this game. I knew I would like this game, but here I am just strolling into greatness late to the party, and now I need to cope with what I do from here on out. However, I'm going to dial back the crazy a little bit and try to formulate articulate words to explain why I love this game so much. So yeah, it's a holy grail game. What I would call a hallowed video game. And look, I'm easy to please, and I can find enjoyment from just about any video game. A game like 13 Sentinels just, <laughs> it's once in a blue moon. And I'm only gonna be able to experience it for the first time once. And I wanna savor it, and here's why. So Vanillaware, do they make bad video games? I Genuine question, I don't know. Uh, I haven't played Grim Grimoire, but I see a very rabid fan base for that. I love all their Vita and Wii games. It's a rhetorical question at this point. Vanillaware just doesn't make bad games, and I freaking love this one. It might be my favorite so far. I didn't know that Dragon's Crown or Muramasa Rebirth could have some like competition at this point, and I still need to play Odin Sphere, but holy moly, great Guga Muga. 13 Sentinels is at the top of the list so far. It just has this unique vision for the story. I mean, there's 13 main characters, uh, and the story, they just intersect. You know, they're bobbing and weaving this story all together, and I mean, it's essentially like all the good parts of like stories like Radiant Historia or, uh, you know, Back to the Future 2, holy crap. And they just mesh this together, and it's just mind-blowing. I cannot get enough of it. And legit, this game grabs me by the dangling dimoses and it has just not let go. I mean, you get like story homages to Godzilla, freaking Daimogen. It's free on YouTube. It's a trilogy of movies and they're some of my favorite kaiju movies ever. Daimogen, gotta look it up. And War of the Worlds. I mean, like, this is the greats of sci-fi. And you know, I mean, the, the most sincerest form of flattery is imitation, but this game pays homage while still having its own identity, directly referencing and kind of funny little you know quips and stuff like that, some of these great works of fiction. But 13 Sentinels distinctly has its own vision. It distinctly has its own identity, and it rocks that son of a gun. This game, it draws inspiration from the greats, pays homage to them with just mind-blowing tales, and every scene has me captivated in the story section, the remembrances, because this game's kind of sectioned out where you play the story, and it's kind, it's not really a visual novel, but it's kind of its own thing where uh, you have playthrough remembrances, and you're kind of filling in all of the plot threads, and you're learning new questions to ask, getting answers to other questions. It's fantastic, and then you have like a destruction uh, section where you get to fight out kind of a real-time strategy ATB system. We'll get into that to a little bit, but in these remembrance sections, each of the stories are just popping off. It's just excellent. Each of the 13 Sentinels has their own distinct identity, their own distinct personality. The English voice acting cast is mwah, chef's kiss. They got some heavy hitters in here to do it. And there are some haunting visuals. You pair that with an extremely lovable cast and great Guga Muga you have on your hands 
one of the best JRPGs I've ever played. Quote me. I mean, because this story has already bought me in, and I'm maybe a third the way through it. I'm, I'm there, hook, line, and sinker. Look, I, I mean, I'm glued to my Switch at night. But let's talk a little bit more about combat. I always say combat is king, and yeah, that I mean, it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis, but I love me some combat. Now, imagine, if you will, the perfect Reese cup. But instead of chocolate and peanut butter, it has a real-time strategy battle system mixed with an ATB system. Oh my god. That's right. Kaiju levels of fun with an intoxicating and satisfying battle system. Whew. I need to tell. You have this field of battle, and then you get to choose your loadout of up to six sentinels, at least for where I'm at in the story. And each of the Sentinels are broke up into four different generations. So you have first, second, third, and fourth generation Sentinels. Your first gen Sentinels are like your single target killers. You know, they're, they're ground units, beefy boys. And you can go up and you just can take on the giant, de like devastatingly large Kaiju that you'll be fighting. The second gen units I've grown to love a lot. You can lay out sentry units that will just continuously lay down suppressive fire or they'll be able to offer up maybe some support skills like some guardian sentries and such like that to just keep your units safe and keep them shielded up. Your third gen units are, I believe, flying units and they just can do some high mobility, devastating AOE. Your fourth gens are also highly mobile units and they can just build these interceptors and you got like a bunch of like ads doing just dot damage to everything and it's just oh my god it all swirls together and i'm thinking to myself this makes me feel smart is this a complicated battle system no not by any means you got simple upgrades to where you can add different loadouts you can add different weapons and upgrade this and that you can upgrade your main tower to offer just massive one-time use spells or two-time use buffs and such like that but it's laid out in a way to where combat is so hit and run to where you know typically my only beef about sometimes with rts games is that you know they take a long time to do a map they take a long time to do a battle their fun is all get out. But, you know, now I've become a father, I've kind of dialed back from, like, the civilization type games. And I'm not saying this is, by any means, anywhere in the same realm of strategy as civilization. But, like, StarCraft. You know, I love those games, but it's hard when I can't hit pause. However, in 13 Sentinels, I can hit pause whenever I want. I can save whenever I want. I can retry that battle stage. I mean, you have the dialogue and banter between whoever you've loaded out to that mission. And each mission has its own like little objectives that can make things a little harder. Like, let's say only use four units for this one instead of six. Only use first and fourth gen sentinels for this. You know, make sure to have this character on the field for this. Beat it within a minute. And it's just fantastic. When it's your turn, it stops the timer. You know, do I know I hate timed games. Trust me. I freaking hate any game with a timer. However, in 13 Sentinels, it is the timer is essentially there so you can like outlast the kaiju. Or if you can kill them before the two minutes is up, you know, you win anyways. But it offers this level of strategy and it has such a visual spectacle to where, you know, you fly a third gen Sentinel and you do like a multi-missile thing. You're flying right into this huge swarm of Dimos or the giant monsters you're fighting. And you just unleash this huge AOE and you see numbers, numbers, numbers. The synapses in my brain roll back in my head and I am in a euphoric perfect and schlag state. Please forgive me. I try to keep it PG here. But that's just it. It's just fun. It's short bursts of fun. And you can retry stages. You can farm. Now, if you try to use the same Sentinels over and over again too much, eventually they'll go in a cooldown state. And all that I think that's really there for is for you to just spread the love around to your other Sentinels. Because I'm going to be honest, each generation of Sentinel is fun to play. Outloading and upgrading each one is satisfying. I mean, I just did a mission last night where there were some supercharged giant kaiju running around, and I had to upgrade my first gen's ability to use Demolisher Blade. <laughs> Woo, man, that felt good. And you know, I'm like doing leap attack over giant buildings and stuff like that just across it. And I just realized I felt like a kid again. And I've been kind of in this gamer slump. I got really sick a couple weeks ago after beating Elden Ring. But 13 Sentinels breathed life back into games for me. I just had so much fun with it. 
Obviously, I just got off of Dust Diver 2. I love that game as well. But 13 Sentinels was just what the JRPG doctor ordered. It's been just so much fun. And, you know, doing the bonus objectives, hitting those big explosions, just getting extremely well-written dialogue and story, I begin to realize eventually I'm going to beat 13 Sentinels. And then I'm going to be in a realm where I can't play this game for the first time again. So I am hitting the brakes and I am soaking it all in. And let me tell you, if you are a fan of JRPGs or RTSs or just visual novels and good stories in general, 13 Sentinels is for you. I've been playing it on normal and it's a fun challenge. It's not been extremely difficult yet. I'm sure there's a difficulty spike coming. But if you're intimidated by that, you can switch difficulty modes on the fly whenever you want. You know, you want it harder, bump it up. I haven't tried the hard setting yet, but maybe for a new game plus run, I don't know. But I'm just saying, this game is legit. And everybody who has been shouting the praises of this game, I am sorry it took me so long. I should have played this sucker on the PS4. I should have been there with you. And I wasn't. I love 13 Sentinels, obviously, but how about you? Have you played this game yet? Have you experienced the Aegis Rim? The Aegis Rim? I don't know. You let me know how to say it down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing. I hope you all are having an incredible week. And I will see you all next time. Devil.